Today we're going to be building an automated indoor hydroponic farm using the Quantum Integration System. The guys at Quantum Integration sent me their starter kit and some additional builder bases to share with you. The Quantum Integration System is a wireless electronics platform that enables you to build IoT devices and apps quickly and easily thanks to an easy to use set of hardware and drag and drop programming interface. I'll leave a link to their site in the video description if you'd like to check them out. The heart of the system is a central server. This is where all of your apps are stored and run. You then use these builder bases on your projects and devices to bring them to life. One of the strengths of the quantum integration system is their seamless wireless connectivity. So you can easily build projects that communicate between builder bases or between one or more builder bases and a customized dashboard through your web browser. For this project, we're going to use the system to build an indoor hydroponic farm with a fully automated flood cycle and grow light. There are quite a few parts to this project, so I'll leave a full parts list in the video description. You can also visit my blog for a more detailed write-up on the project. I started out by assembling the grow house. This is just a generic 60 by 40 by 60 cm tent style grow house. They're quite commonly available online. I chose this one because I intend growing lettuce and other small leafy vegetables. I bought three containers to hold the grow pots. Two smaller ones which would each hold six grow pots and one larger one for two grow pots. I measured the pots and then used the laser cutter to cut the lids of the containers to fit them. I looked at some local stores for some small float switches, but I couldn't find anything small enough to fit my containers, so I decided to try and make my own. I took the rubber part out of some syringes and added a magnet to the inside. I then glued a cork float onto the bottom of each. A reed switch picks up on the position of the magnet and closes the circuit when the water level gets to a certain point. This can also be adjusted by moving the reed switch up and down on the syringe. I then cut the USB connectors off the ends of my pumps and replaced them with some DuPont connectors which can be screwed into the terminals on my relay board. For each flood cycle, the first pump will pump water into the large container until it's full. The second pump will then move the water into the two smaller containers, which together have the same volume as the large container, and lastly the third pump will move the water back into the reservoir. Now that we've got the pumps in place, we need to automate the flood cycle using one of our builder bases. I'm going to use the builder base along with a relay board. The pumps are connected to the relays and the builder base drives the relays to turn each pump on and off. I built a quick demo app to test each pump and the grow light relay using a button on the web dashboard. Once the pumps were working, I started working on the automated app. The app consists of three sections, an environment tab which displays the current temperature and humidity as well as creates an alert if the temperature exceeds 30 degrees. A pump tab has manual controls for each of the three pumps, similar to the test example, but it also includes an automated cycle which runs each pump in sequence for the flood cycle and then waits a period of time before executing the next flood cycle. This automated sequence can be started and stopped through the dashboard. Lastly, there's a grow light tab. The grow light tab has a slider switch to turn the grow light on and off, and also has an automated cycle which turns the grow light on for a 10 hour period and then turns it off for a 14 hour period. This can be started and stopped from the dashboard as well. There's a bit more to do than just create the app. You also need to generate and upload the firmware for each builder base. This is quite straightforward and in essence just tells the builder bases what is connected to which pins. Once this is done, the dashboard can be accessed through the server and we can start using the controls. If we now run the automated flood cycle, this is what we get. After a lot of trial and error, I couldn't get the float switches to operate reliably. There wasn't enough space in the small syringes to put a large magnet and the small magnets only triggered the reed switch when they were in a particular orientation. 
This was fine 90% of the time, but on the odd occasion when the switch didn't close properly, it either flooded my desk or left one pump running dry. I eventually found some small float switches online, but they're on a long delivery, so I'll only be able to put them in in a couple of weeks time. The system now runs on a time-based cycle. This works well for about 2 or 3 days and then needs a couple of minutes of adjustment. This is not too bad, but it needs to be fixed. I then installed the grow light. I'm going to be making up a cable to connect the grow light relay to turn the light on and off automatically as well. I made up some laser cut acrylic side panels to mount the electronics onto. This was so they can be installed on the inside of the grow tent. You could use a similar setup for a range of home automation projects as well. You've now got a temperature and humidity sensor as well as a relay board with up to 8 usable relays on it. You'd need to connect some relays together as you've only got 6 free pins on the builder base. I connected the board to the pumps and grow light and then mounted it on the back of the grow tent. I then started up the server and tested the pumps again. This is what a sped up version of the automatic control looks like. You get a feeling for just how quiet the pumps are when you turn the light on. The two large fans cooling the LEDs are quite loud. Now that the system's working we can add the plants. As mentioned earlier, I'm going to be starting off by growing a few different types of lettuce. I'm pretty new to hydroponics as well, so it's going to take some experimenting to see what works and what doesn't. I think the basics are all here, and that's going to be a good starting point for indoor farming. The last thing I'm going to do is add a remote LCD display, which can be used to keep an eye on the temperature and humidity in the grow tent from a different location. This will also be useful once my level sensors are installed. This is as easy as dragging two LCD blocks into the app, and then dragging the sensor outputs to them. We can then connect the display to another builder base, and it's ready to go. I hope you enjoyed this project. Let me know what you think of it in the comment section and have a look at the quantum integration system if you're looking at getting into building wireless or IoT projects. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.